Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested here at Comic-Con 2018. Now, I'm here at the Mondo booth, which typically is packed. The line around the corner goes stretches for hundreds of feet. Because look, here for posters. I'm gonna be in that line later, but we're here to talk about collectibles. Brock, head of collectibles at Mondo. You guys have a huge collectibles presence this year. We do, yeah. It's been steadily growing over uh, the past few years. Our first time showing collectibles at uh, Comic-Con was just a simple little glass case. And then we have these two tanks the next year and now we got full on two cases here showing all kinds of crazy wacky stuff and having a great time doing it. I remember that first one you did with the Iron Giant which yeah, now yeah, I mean yeah, on yeah. eBay it's like many times what it went for uh, on that sale yeah, yeah, yeah. which is such a great figure. You guys in your poster world work with artists for their interpretations of movie posters. Right. Is that the same philosophy you take for collectibles? It isn't because it, there's so many different types of artists that go into making it collectible. There's a, a statue, a figure, a tiki mug. There's so many people involved in it from an initial designer to a sculptor or sculptors to a uh, 3D printing to mm -hmm. mold and cast to painting so much stuff that is involved in each one so it's it's more about building the the right team for them got it and then going in and doing that product right you know but it all starts with with you know with the vision that, that one of us has and going in and tackling that it's kind of like almost like going into like a mini battle with your with your little squad there that's really how each product is, is designed and made and it's legitimized with the licenses you have you have right. the license you have ninja turtles previously now you're in batman animated series yes yes tell me about designing at that scale and are these posable and, and how many different little fun things you want to put in a figure. So yeah, for each, we approach each license differently when it comes to the 12-inch figures. So with Ninja Turtles, I wanted to do old school style from the original comic, but with a kind of a more a 90s twist. So they're the original designs. They came with all red bandanas, but I was like, well, people are going to want the different colors as well. So switch with their heads, and, and, and so you can have the cartoon colors, as we call it. But when it came to Batman the Animated Series, um, I wanted to do figures that were high-end, 12-inch scale, but I wanted them to look like they were animated cells. Uh, so the way we painted them was really the key. You know, of course, we sculpted them, used some great artists on that, sculpted them right, tried to hide the articulation, make it as, as sleek as possible with the designs that, that are already there. When it came to the paint, we really did the, like the highlights, the shading that you would see in an animated cell, really stark, bright contrast and highlights. I think it really pops when you look at them. You look like, oh wow, is that an animated cell? At least that's my hope anyway. Are you taking from the original production some of those profile views for your turnarounds to make sure the silhouettes look good in every direction? Absolutely. The, the, the challenge though is because of the, it's an animated show, everything tends to change yeah. when people turn around. So we try to like combine the best views possible and try to make an amalgam of what looks best for an all around 3D product and to turn around. Yeah. That, that Mr. Freeze from Heart of Ice, like Batman animated series, like with the posters you do, are very tied to the episodes specifically. Yes, right. Yes, yes, and so yes. Heart of Ice, what you have here is just so stunning. Yeah, well, that one is uh, for the Mondo exclusive. I, I call it, you know, internally, I call it the Sad Pack because if you get the Mondo version of it, you, cut, you get uh, the Nora Freeze gravestone, which is actually from the comic, not the TV show, and then you get his unmasked or ungoggled head, and then the broken dome. So it really kind of almost tells a story unto itself, especially when you include the uh, the ballerina in the snow globe so it's kind of like a little, little sad you know uh, Mr. Freeze but but it makes me happy so. I also see you have Masters Universe and also on this shelf here just a variety of licenses from video games to what is this Mecha Spider-Man so Mondo Mecha is our new line it's kind of our umbrella robot line it's twofold the first fold, which is just to me is the one that really uh, uh, gets me excited and, and wakes up when I wake up in the morning, is we're taking characters you know, Spider-Man, Captain America, Black Panther, Black Widow, Batman, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and interpret them as like giant Japanese-style robots. So you know we're using influences from everything from Pat Labor, Gundam, Voltron. Evangelion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and combining into characters that you want. So our imagination is like, oh, what's happening in there? Oh, Peter Parker's in that mech right now controlling that. You know, so it's kind of, they almost tell a little story unto themselves. And then the second fold of that line is, is taking characters that are already robots mm. and doing them in the scale. So they're 12 inch scale. So we'll reintroduce Iron Giant into the line oh, at a 12 inch scale. And then we'll, we're also going to be introducing next year Transformers. Uh, Non-transforming, but fully articulated. And we we're going to start off a sound wave, which is exciting because normally people start off with Optimus and Megatron. There's a lot of Optimus and Megatrons out there. 
huge fan, but I want to do Soundwave is my guy. And that's who we're starting off with with Transformers. Well, in terms of Mecha, one of the fun things is that the joints don't necessarily have to be hidden, so you can go for extreme articulation. A lot of toy collectors take pride in the posing and the photography of their toys. How do you make sure these can be posed to all sorts of extreme positions? That's that's the that's the hardest part actually is the engineering and sometimes it works in 3D because most of these are sculpted in, in 3D um, uh, digitally I should say um, is what looks like it works there may not necessarily work in, in real so it's all about getting samples done playing with them what works and what doesn't and revising 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 um, but because you know we, we take pride in our photography we do ourselves so we always want to make sure that I can get the picture or, or our photographer can get the picture or whomever can get the picture internally so that that can then be done with by a fan so we're we're playing with them too where you know they're each of our products is pardon the pun but tested so uh, you know but through and through that's what we do we just play 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 and make sure they test work. those tensions so, low yeah. center of gravity it's got to stand on its own and this one definitely does. Yeah, this is, cool. this is an early work in progress too. So if this is the early version, just wait till you see when we revise, revise, revise this guy. So yeah. Oh, well, it's awesome. You guys have a whole wall here in the fortress that is the Mondo booth. Brock, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you, you too. So Thank you very much. Appreciate it.